I gotta pass through this rap shit, Frisco Savage. Young guns busting head to get their name established. Bayview Hunters Point, the corner of San Francisco, with the lowest income, most toxins, highest homicide rate. Like many inner city areas, has plenty of liquor stores, no supermarkets, and virtually no fresh produce available. The kids that live in its projects face a future of drugs, gangs, violence, and prison. But guns can be transformed to growth. The growing fresh organic produce in your front yard, you know, having, you know, you want a lemon, well you don't pay a dollar a lemon at the store or two dollars for an avocado, you can just pick one off the tree. And apples taste like apples, you know, and that's something we haven't had for years, you know, it's so rare. So when you go into your big community garden and you want an apple and you pick this apple off the apple tree and, you know, pretty soon it makes sense that it's something, it's the right thing to do and you want to continue to do it. Um, I believe that since Bayview Hunters Point is one of the most polluted places in the country and the place that people socially have dumped on as well, um, that the pendulum has swung to its... Uh, to its highest degree in Bayview Hunters Point. So for change to happen, it, start, it has to come from here. At-risk youth learn gardening, provide food for the community, and receive a small stipend through Hunters Point family programs, like this one at the Alice Griffith Community Garden and the Double Rock Housing Project. Today they're joined by teachers and students from Earth Activist Trainings, which teaches permaculture, a system of ecological design. They're sheet mulching this bed, laying down cardboard to suppress weeds. Cardboard is also a home for worms, and you can plant by simply punching through down to the soil below. As it decomposes, it adds fertility. On top of the cardboard goes compost and a mulch of straw to hold in moisture. A good sheet mulch is like a horizontal compost pile, and it's a quick and easy way to jump start a garden. In permaculture, we're always looking for ways to minimize the use of energy including our own, and to work with nature to meet human needs while regenerating the soil and the environment around us. We can leave the jungles alone, we can leave the rainforest alone, we can leave the forest alone. People can come live in the cities, they can have their iPods and their little electric cars and their blenders or whatever else that they want to have to, you know, increase their or improve their quality of life in their fresh uh, organic smoothies and, and just kind of leave, leave all the animals and the bees and everything else that's suffering right now and looking at extinction to repopulate. Right. Now, can you reach all the garden area, all, all, where all the straw is, this is where things will be planted. Is there any place you can't reach? All the way over there so far, right. The heart of this program are garden coordinators like Miss Jackie, who lives in the nearby projects and provides day-to-day -day supervision and training for the youth. Well, I think they need to learn so that they could feed themselves for one thing and uh, they could also have it as a career. Uh, landscaping, uh, doing herbal gardens, uh, growing their own vegetables, fresh vegetables that are not sprayed with um, pesticides. It's a paradigm shift and a shift in consciousness that needs to happen. So through our programs, what we're trying to do is slowly introduce people to the concept of 
um, eating fresh produce and growing fresh produce and being intimately involved with the food that you eat and caring for it and developing a relationship with the natural world around you. The challenge I think for Hunter's Point is the same as it's going to be anywhere else in America and that is making green part of popular culture. Making it hip, making it cool and that's finding marketing and ways to penetrate people's mentalities to, to change the way that they think about it. That it's easy to do, it's more convenient if you really look at it, it's cheaper and um, and then it also empowers you to begin to change the world and change the reality that we live in. Now we got the rock spiral, we got another spiral. It's beautiful. And and they love it. Well, who did this? Who did that? Right. <laughs> First step is finding ways to make green technology accessible and affordable to to people with less money and I think once you do that then you begin to transform the thinking of the masses and once you transform the thinking of the masses it's over we've won you know I love it myself I sit out here now after after you guys leave I'll sit out here and just gaze over the spot I sit out here many days and just sit and look, you know. It's so beautiful. And then wait until all the trees are blooming. Oh my God. Is if we figure out this high density urban masses question, if we figure out how to live sustainably in the cities amongst the poorest people, then we can begin to basically change the whole world. I just, uh, I'm just excited about it myself. <laughs> Very excited. Project balls to the yellow streets. This is from the north to south, the west to east. I'm so, so on my grind now. Gotta make it some way, somehow. The project balls to the yellow streets. I just love it. I don't know what else to say, but I just enjoy it. Project balls to the yellow streets.